गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम ऑन सेकेंड सो टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट मूविंग क्वाल गैलोनोमीटर बट आई थिंक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू न्यू टू नो अबाउट गैलोनोमीटर गैलोनोमीटर इज अ इंस्ट्रूमेंट व्हिच हैज टू फंक्शंस नंबर वन व्हिच इज इट्स वाइटल एंड क्रूशियल फंक्शन इट्स बेसिक फंक्शन इज टू डिटेक्ट और टेस्ट द प्रेजेंस ऑफ करेंट वेदर एनी अमाउंट ऑफ करेंट इज प्रेजेंट इन एनी सर्किट इलेक्ट्रिकल सर्किट और नॉट जनरली इट इज मेजर बाय द गैलोनोमीटर इवन इफ वेरी पीपल वेरी वी करंट कैन फ्लो इट कैन बी आल्सो इजीली डिटरमाइंड बाय गैलोनोमीटर नंबर 2 इज टू मेजर दैट अमाउंट ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ करंट बट देयर इज आल्सो अनदर इंस्ट्रूमेंट एमीटर व्हिच इज आल्सो यूज्ड टू मेजर द फ्लो ऑफ करंट थ्रू सर्किट बट द फैक्ट इज दैट यूजिंग एमीटर वी कैन मेजर द अमाउंट ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ करंट इन अ वेरी इजी प्रोसेस दैट इज वेरी इजीली एंड डायरेक्टली whereas through galvanometer it's not a easy process to measure the amount of flow of current you can see and later we are going to see it is the amount of flow of current can be measured through a very complicated process so that is the one basic thing is that the basic or vital function of a galvanometer is to detect the amount detect the presence of current okay now galvanometer works on the principle of magnetic effect of electric current and also the effect of magnet on electric current Okay, in previous uh, in, in in so many videos earlier, isn't it? Earlier uh, I have made so many videos. You have seen that the magnetic effect of electric current. That is Oersted experiment. If we if current flows through a current can if current flows through a conductor, it produces a magnetic field around itself. If we place a magnetic needle, it's uh, north it's north pole deflects. So through that we can easily realize that a magnetic field is created. So this is called action of current on magnet. It means magnetic effect of electric current. According to third law, Newton's third law, opposite is also true. It means if we place a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, that magnetic field will also express a force. Okay, the expression I have, on which I have already made uh, so many videos that is force on a current carrying conductor. I explained in detail. In, okay, in that video, and that is the last video we have seen. That is the torque on a current carrying loop placed in a magnetic field. That is called effect of magnet on current okay so galvanometer works on both this principle because there are two types of galvanometer okay so two uh, galvanometer works on based on okay works on these two processes okay on these two principles now how galvanometer detects the presence of the any current through the deflection of the needle of this coil a coil is in between already a magnetic field is already placed inserted in the galvanometer and the coil is also formed so due to that magnetic field coil is deflected and this deflection occurs due to flow of current because when a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field isn't it it experiences a torque isn't it a static charge cannot produce so because of the current carrying conductor only the if the conductor carries current only it experiences a torque that is force through that force it suffers some angular displacement that is deflection so we can say this deflection is directly proportional to current so it means the strength of current can be easily measured through the deflection if current is very weak very feeble deflection will be more because torque and force will be more uh, torque will be less if current is very weak if current amount of current is very small torque will be okay the strength of the magnetic will be very less so it will just experience a very less force very easy so deflection will be very feeble if amount of flow of current is if the current is strong torque will be the magnetic the strength of the magnetic will be field will be strong is it deflection will be strong so through the deflection of the uh, coil we can easily measure the strength of the current this is the function of a galvanometer now generally galvanometer are of two types one is moving magnet galvanometer and one is moving coil galvanometer in your syllabus moving coil galvanometer is included whereas moving magnet coil magnet is not but i think you need to know moving magnet means inside in this type of galvanometer a magnetic needle is placed and that magnet it moves so that's why it is called moving magnet galvanometer okay and in moving coil galvanometer no magnet is used only coil only a coil is placed inside a rectangular frame and through the deflection of the coil we can measure the amount of flow of current it is also called tangent galvanometer because here the amount of flow of current is directly proportional to tangent of the angle of deflection of the coil whereas this is not it is directly proportional to that is current is directly proportional to amount of deflection direct deflection 
and moving coil galvanometer is generally more sensitive because moving magnet you can see it can measure only up to 10 to the power minus 4 ampere amount of current whereas it can measure current up to that is it can presence it can detect presence up to 10 to the power minus 9 ampere that is 1 nano ampere so we can say it is more accurate more superior over moving magnet so that's why it has very wide range of used in wide range of application in laboratories now moving coil galvanometer is also are of two types one is called suspended coil galvanometer and one is called pivoted coil that is stable galvanometer suspended coil galvanometer it is it can measure up to 10 to the power minus 9 ampere whereas it can 10 to the power minus 6 suspended coil very easy a coil is suspended through a string by a by the help of a string metal string and alloy string whereas pivoted coil means a coil is pivoted they attach the spring pivoted and it deflects isn't it it is called table galvanometer generally used in laboratory which is okay which is a, exactly look like an ammeter or volmeter okay now this works on the go okay it's measure the amount of flow of current through scalar arrangement of the deflection method okay and whereas the pivoted coil detect the presence of current through the deflection of the needle clear so <coughs> comes to the moving coil galvanometer clear now this is the construction now first of all at first a rectangular frame made up of aluminium is generally taken and around itself around it over it an insulated copper wire is generally firmly wound isn't it is generally wound over it and made a coil this is called coil if any wire is wound around any shape of object it may be of rectangular okay rectangular it may be of circular ring if we take any rectangular shape in transformer we have seen in, in electromagnet also if we take it okay a uh, eye shape or a straight rod shape object and if we want it is also called coil so this is coil okay inside coil there is an eye shaped soft iron soft iron okay soft a, a cylindrical shape soft iron is generally placed which is called core okay and this arrangement is generally inserted okay placed okay just in between a man a strong magnetic field you can see and you can see the shape of the magnetic field isn't it it is curved both poles are curved so far in so many experiments and experiments we have seen we have not seen this kind of magnetic field in that kind of in so many so far we have seen only a rectangular shape the two poles are often rectangular so that is core shape but here it is curved why because inside you can see the core that is soft iron is cylindrical in shape and over it isn't it inside there is a rectangular frame inside rectangular frame the iron core is placed and the okay and so the coil and coil is generally formed by wounding it around the rectangular frame and it generally rotates so that it can get enough space to rotate and it doesn't collide it cannot collide with the two poles of the magnet so that's why the magnet with the shape of the two poles are given in this shape they are of such shape it can easily rotate now comes to the point now there is a string you can see w1 and w2 it is a string which is made up of an alloy alloy of copper which is called phosphor bronze we all know that bronze is made of generally copper and tin and that is phosphor so phosphorus bronze have phosphorus copper and tin so along with these three materials this this is the material of the where this wire is formed okay it is very thin very delicate clear now okay now generally now how we can detect the presence of the current now generally this moving coil galvanometer is such is so placed on that testing body okay the amount of flow of the presence of current of that instrument of whose inst of which instrument the instrument in which the presence of the current we will have to determine that is the testing body is generally so placed moving coil galvanometer is such a place in this way that the current from that testing body generally enters through this okay and also we can easily measure that presence of current or amount of current by the deflection for that suspended coil galvanometer is used clear okay? suspended coil galvanometer and both pivoted coil okay so generally there are two types of so there is some okay there are some arrangement so because of that the suspended coil is used here in moving coil galvanometer suspended coil galvanometer is used rather than pivoted coil okay so this is suspended coil galvanometer you can see this is called pivoted suspended because coil is suspended with the help of a 
strain. So figure A is the, it is the suspended coil galvanometer, whereas B in figure B it is pivoted coil galvanometer. So now we are going to uh, measure the amount of current, deflection, everything using the suspended coil galvanometer. Very easy, since the coil inside, okay. In pivoted coil galvanometer, since the diagram has been drawn, okay, in it is very zoomed in zoom side, so that's why it is very easy to understand. Both the frame and the uh, okay, both works on the same principle, but there is a very slight difference only in the construction, isn't it? That is a circular scale and the needle deflex, and whereas it is suspended. The construction of both the rectangular frame, coil, and armature are same. So it will be very easy and convenient for you to understand this how the coil is formed. Okay. The, this is the coil, okay. Coil is generally placed like this, isn't it? Okay, so coil is insulated copper wire is generally owned over it. And inside that a coil that soft iron core, I said core is generally placed inside, and it rotates. So here come to the suspended coil galvanometer. This is strain P and Q are two fulcrum through which the current is generally enters. Okay. This is strain W1, W2, there is a spring inserted um, at the bottom. Now, so ABCD, I can see ABCD is the rectangular flame. Okay. Now you can see there is a circle. It is a mirror. It is a plane mirror. Okay. I, I, uh, I generally mention about the deflection. Okay. Uh, this is generally you through this deflection when coil rotates due to flow of the current when current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field it, it experiences a torque so when it experiences a torque okay when a light source light generally is generally dispatched from the SK, uh, stationary light source okay the the mirror also rotates since the mirror is attached with the string and when current flows through the spring the coil rotates since coil attached with the string, mirror is also attached with the string, so mirror rotates and through the deflection of the light on a scale here, we can easily measure the, the amount of current. Let's see how. So current enters generally through this element. Suppose this magnetic coil is placed on that instrument in which the presence of current we will have to test. Current enters, as soon as the current enters, it takes the top, okay. The, okay. Isn't it? The coil moves. As soon as the coil will move, okay, the mirror will also move. Then, what, what generally happens? So generally, you can see, deflection also occurs. A general scale is placed. This is the light source. L is the light source. So when light flows, okay, light is on, on when light is incident on the mirror, it is this, okay. It is before the flow of current. When there was no current, there was no deflection in the coil, mirror was stationary, which is generally indicated by straight line, not dotted straight line. The incident light and deflected light. This is scale, this is mirror, this is light source. Clear? When light spot is generally sent, it is reflected. Now, when current is passed through the coil, as soon as the current passes through the coil, the coil experiences a torque, so coil, the coil will start to rotate. This rectangular flame, this rectangular flame will start to rotate. Since mirror is also attached with it, so mirror will also rotate. Since mirror will rotate, so the light spot will also deflect. <coughs> if mirror, now there is a theory that is, if any mirror is deflected or rotated through angle of theta, the reflected ray will just rotate its twice value, that is twice theta. Clear? It can be easily proved. I will, if I get time, I will prove later. If any mirror, any plane mirror is rotated through any certain angle, that is theta, the reflected ray will rotate. Okay, will be rotated twice its value, that is two theta. Okay, these are distance between the scale and the mirror. This is the deflection. This is the deflection of the. Okay. This is the deflection. Clear. Yeah, this is the deflection of the direct deflection of the reflected ray. Clear. Yeah. So now, <coughs> this is the length. So now, here we can see that is if A is the number of turns, number of turns in the coil, B is the magnetic field, A is the area of coil, clear? I is the current in the coil, the amount of flow of current is I in the coil, clear? Quite complicated in the picture, amount of flow of current in the coil. So now we have already learned torque on the coil. Torque on a current carrying conductor is I B L sin okay A I A B sin theta F theta is equal to perpendicular 90 degree isn't it? So theta is equal to sin 90 sin 91. 
theta equals to angle of deflection of coil that the deflect the angle through which that is angular displacement <coughs> we can also see so now as soon as torque acts on the coil it generally deflects so the mirror also deflects as soon as it deflects also a restoring force is also develops inside it which helps to restore its original shape and size restoring force means when we stretch a spring isn't it when we apply some external force a spring is generally stretched now when we release it as okay immediately it get back it gets back to its original position it means the force which helps to restore recover its original shape and size is called restoring force <clears throat> and it is very clear that this restoring force is directly proportional to the applied external force because if there is no force if we don't if, if i don't touch the spring if we don't stretch it it will remain in the same position if the rest will, okay if we increase the applied force okay it will the amount of the restoring force will be also increased it means a restoring force will develop a torque so it means a restoring torque will also develop inside the spring isn't it of the coil isn't it through spring because of the elastic elasticity property of the spring isn't it it, it will rotate the spring will also rotate and as soon as it will maximum then again it will get back it will restore to its original position and since because of this applied force because of this application of the current isn't it this current it also suffers some deflection angle of deflection it is also due to torque or force more current more torque more deflection i think it is very clear if torque is more it will deflect more just like in case of pendulum isn't it this is angular this is called amplitude if you slightly displace it when we apply some force when you displace it apply applying some force it suffers some angular displacement since it creates some angle since angle so that's why it's called angular displacement so theta so more will be the applied force more will be its angle of deflection so that's why torque so as soon as the direct torque is applied obviously it's equal and opposite we can say according to newton's third law since this torque produces the deflection angle of deflection in the coil so all are proportional okay we have already learned torque is equal to nib nib proportional to theta nib is equal to c theta here c is the constant clear it is called the restoring okay this is called the restoring force constant c is equal to nib by theta clear for producing unit deflection isn't it if c is equal to if theta is equal to 1 c is equal to nib so it means this is restoring force constant isn't it which is to produce unit deflection it is called restoring force constant isn't it so now from here we can easily find the value of i i is equal to c by n a b is equal to theta clear c by n a b theta you can clearly see you can clearly see that is c is equal to n a b theta i is equal to c by n a b theta where we can say i directly proportional to theta or i is equal to k theta here k is equal to c by n a b very clear this is called reduction factor reduction factor why you need to know the each and every meaning okay reduction means which reduced which shorten is said it means you can see through adjusting the value of k we can convert through the deflection through the angle of deflection we can convert the angle of deflection into the amount of current very clear k is equal to c by nb adjusting the value of k we can convert the angle of deflection into through by adjusting the value of k okay through the angle of deflection of the coil we can convert it into the amount of flow of current that's why it is called reduction factor since it is reduced from theta to i so clear putting the value of okay so now so this is one thing now here in this case you can see this is 2 theta when theta is very so 2 theta is equal to d by d is equal to d by d when theta is small and this is very close to here we can say so 2 theta is equal to d by d So theta is equal to when theta is very small, then we can write tan theta equals to theta. So the theta is very small, very close. So tan two theta you can measure it is very close to here each other. So tan two is equal to perpendicular by base. So two theta is equal to d by d. So theta is equal to d by two d. Using this 
scalar arrangement. The scale is placed, a spot is generally placed, so generally the spot is generally deflection of the first spot. We can easily find out that theta is equal to d by 2d. Clear? So now i is equal to c by c a theta into theta. By putting the value of theta from here, okay, c by a may be and d by twice d. So we can also say i is directly proportional to d also. Clear? So in this way, we can measure the amount of current. That's why initially during the beginning of the video, I told it is not easy process to measure the flow of current okay, using galvanometer. It's a very complicated process. So that's why its basic function is to detect or presence the, okay, the, the presence of flowing of current also. Clear? Now, there are two terms. There is a sensitivity. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned sensitivity of the voltmeter, uh, sensitivity of the galvanometer. Now, there are two types of sensitivity. Okay. One is current sensitivity, one is called voltage sensitivity. Current sensitivity means you are clear if when it's sensibly or accurately measure the current, and when it is voltage, it is called voltage sensitivity. Now theta by i, if theta by i that is n a b b n a b by c, it means when the deflection produced in the galvanometer, okay, when the deflection produced in the galvanometer due to flow of unit current, it is called current sensitivity, and in case of voltmeter. Okay, when the deflection produced in the galvanometer coil due to u due to flow of okay due to unit unit potential difference or unit voltage that is called voltage sensitivity. Why theta by b b equals to i r? Okay, b equals to i r. Then putting the value of i c by n a b theta into r, isn't it? R is generally you can easily b equals to i r. B equals to i into r. Okay, then putting the value of r. Theta by b, i is equal to just put the value of i is equal to b is equal to i r i is equal to v by r. Clear? Then put the value of v r. You can easily r a theta by theta by i or theta by b. B is equal to i r. Very easy. You can find it. B equals to i r, isn't it? So i equals to b by r. I is equal to b by r. So put the value of i r i, isn't it? I is equal to b by r. I by is equal to b by r also. So b by r. So then theta by b and r then r n a b will be in the numerator and c will be in the denominator. So this is voltage sensitivity. Now you can see the sensitivity can be increased since this is current sensitivity. So how sensitivity can be increased? It means even a very small amount of okay flowing through unit current, we can easily measure the amount of flow of current. Okay, so current sensitivity is means a very small amount of current, isn't it? And voltage is very small voltage. So you can see the current sensitivity can be increased either by increasing a a b or decreasing c clear but it is not done because n is the number of turns and a is called its we have seen that is area of the coil if we do so if we increase the number of turns it means more current since any electrical instrument possesses resistance so more turn more resistance will be there and if we increase the area the coil will become very Thick, large. It means it will it will be it will become very heavy, which in turn cause okay the break of the string, isn't it? So we cannot make any changes at n and a. If area increases, then it will become a large coil. Then mass will be increased, and it's very delicate, very thin wire. It may break. So we can either increase b, either increase b or c. Clear? That is c. How we can increase B? That is magnetic field by using a horseshoe magnet. That's why we have used horseshoe magnet. Why? Generally, in so many electromagnet, in so many experiment, you will see that horseshoe magnet is used. Since in horseshoe magnet, both the poles are very close to each other, isn't it? So it creates a very strong magnetic field. That's why. C. C is the it is okay the the deflection constant, isn't it? The deflection constant C. So how we can okay how we can reduce it? By using a very thin and very fine, so that deflection is very small. Deflection is very small, so in that case we can easily increase the current sensitivity also, and it is also applicable in case of voltage sensitivity also. Now, in the pivoted galvanometer, so we have just discussed about suspended coil. Okay, yeah. Now in pivoted uh, coil, how is it happening? Isn't it now generally to hair? Isn't it hair to spring? Hair to hair to hair to hair spring. Generally, hair clip is generally spring is generally used. So this current is generally inserted. Okay, and a deflect a coil, isn't it? A generally, you can see a needle. A needle is generally moves over 
a circular, isn't it? A circular scale. So through the deflection, we can easily measure the amount of flow of. Okay, we can present the detect. Uh, we can detect the presence of the current. Okay. Now between these two, which one is more convenient? This is more sensitive, but it is very everything since everything has pros and cons. So between these two galvanometer, suspended coil galvanometer is more sensitive since it is more accurate since it can measure current up to one nano ampere. Whereas it is very it has some it has some disadvantage because it is not easy to carry, isn't it? Since its contents are very thin, where a little bit of jar, isn't it? It may cause to break of the string. So it means it is not a portable. It, it cannot. It is not a. It is not easy to convey from one place to another. Or a spy voltage coil, as I already said, it's a table galvanometer. Okay, it is very easy. It doesn't contain any string, so it can easily be carried from one place to another. So this is more accurate, but it is not easy to carry. But it is not so accurate. But it is very use. Okay, it is very easy to carry from one place to another. Okay.